inner city black America, you are often spoken about frequently in the media by various political pundits. You are often made synonymous with crime, with violence, with a lack of responsibility, a lack of adherence to ethics. Your political dissent against police brutality is often delegitimized with common retorts such as, well, what about all of this black on black crime? Inner city black America, you deserve a defense attorney, someone who will zealously defend you from the lies, from the slander and from the innuendo. I am your brother, Hakeem Muhammad, and I aim to be such a defense attorney. I provide zealous representation to African-American political dissent and African-American political thought. When it comes to defending African-American political dissent, I leave no stone unturned. I analyze and I scrutinize various claims made about inner city black America by various political pundits, and I expose them for their vacuousness, their academic dishonesty, and their academic incompetence. The assumption is that if more black people percentage-wise are arrested than white people, that must be due to systemic racism and not due to the number of crimes being committed by individuals who make a decision. To begin with, uh, I don't believe in the concept of mass incarceration because that implies that the police are going into black communities with lasso, rounding people up and taking them to jail for no reason. I don't think that's happening. Every person who is in jail has had a trial or a plea. The idea that people are just being grabbed and thrown into prison to keep alive some sort of prison industrial complex where the, the prison masters are the ones running the system, I don't see evidence of that. As far as the ridiculous, how would you explain the amount of black people in jail currently? Higher numbers of black people committing crimes. Well, that's not the case. That's it is absolutely the case. Actuals, black academics from Michelle Alexander to Angela Davis, they put forth this thesis about the prison industrial complex and the role of structural racism in the prison industrial complex and the mass incarceration of black people. Of course, Mr. Shapiro, he does not accept such a political proclamation. Instead, he offers his explanation that is, that is black people are more likely to be in prison, that they're overrepresented in prison simply because they commit the most crime. So let's dissect and analyze this claim. First of all, where's the evidence that black people commit the most crime? Naturally, when you ask the question and when you ask this question, when you ask them for evidence that black people commit the most crime, they're going to point to some sort of governmental data, some sort of FBI data. Well, we can look at all of this data and I have a very, very simple response to it. None of this evidence shows that black people commit the most crime. It shows that black people are convicted the most of crime. And we must draw a distinction between who commits the most crime and who is convicted the most for crime. And in the, I'm going to present data and I'm going to present studies that show that prosecutors are not fair to black people, that prosecutors give black people harsher penalties than white Americans, and that prosecutors punish black people in a harsher way and give black people harsher penalties that are more lenient towards white people. And so all of this governmental data that shows that black people allegedly commit the most crime, all of it is really indicting is the fact that prosecutors are racist. Now, let me prove uh, this argument. Now, there's a study titled uh, Race and Wrongful Conviction. You want to talk about black people allegedly committing the most crime? Well, black people are also wrongfully convicted and wrongfully incarcerated for crime. This study looked at how African Americans are disproportionately wrongfully convicted for crime, that they they are found guilty by jurors and judges for crimes that, that they did not in fact commit. And the study found that African Americans are more likely to be a, a victim of a wrongful conviction, to be convicted of a crime which they did not in fact commit. And this holds true in the category of murder. African Americans are more likely to be convicted of a murder that they did not commit. African Americans are more likely to be convicted of a sexual assault that they did not commit. African Americans are more likely to be uh, convicted of a drug crime that they did not, in fact, commit in that they were all later exonerated for. This is what the evidence was showing. The study further looked at uh, what drove the, these wrongful convictions of African Americans. And unsurprisingly, they found it was police perjury, that police lied against black defendants, police planted evidence, police engaged in some sort of misconduct that resulted in this wrongful uh, incarceration, this wrongful conviction. The study also found that Brady violations, that uh, prosecutors, for those who don't know what a Brady violation is, prosecutors have a constitutional duty to uh, give to the defense evidence that shows that they are innocent. And in cases of African-American defense, well, the study found 
that African Americans who are wrongfully convicted of crime, the prosecutors did not engage in this constitutional duty, and there was a Brady violation that they did not engage in the ethical duty to show the defense evidence that would show that they did not commit this crime. Uh, very highly prevalent present in wrongful convictions of African Americans, and so I mean this so-called governmental data that African Americans you know commit the most crime when African Americans are wrongfully convicted of of the most crime as well is really not saying is not really any sort of uh, valid moral indictment of Black America. Furthermore, uh, white America, I'm going to make a more structural, uh, political, overarching political argument here. A uh, crime perpetrated by white America has historically gone unprosecuted. Uh, from the kidnapping of black people in slavery, from the lynchings, from the uh, Jim Crow. I mean, white America, they have the ability, historically, white America has the ability, the exclusive ability to define what is the crime and to prosecute crime. And black people have not had such a position. And so it was often, a, it was a crime for uh, black people, for example, to often walk on the same side of the street as white people. It was a crime for black people to drink from the same uh, water fountain as black people. These were punishable uh, crimes within American society. Uh, furthermore, uh, things or actions which should have been a crime, which should have been a prosecutable crime, such as the lynching to black people, such as the uh, violence by the KKK against black people, in which so many innocent black people were lynched, were castrated, were killed, that crime historically went unprosecuted because that position of a prosecutor was historically designated for white and violence against black people simply was not considered, uh, it was not uh, in the prosecutor's agenda to prosecute. And this is why if you look at uh, Chicago, for example, there was a history of various Irish gangs bombing black residential homes, killing black children, black babies, and just arsoning black neighborhoods, killing random black people. And instead of prosecuting them, the government in mass recruited them into the Chicago Police Department. Look it up. This is the history of the Chicago Police Department that they recruited white Irish gangs who are racist against black Americans and who perpetrated acts of violence against black America. And so again, when crime by white America has historically gone unprosecuted, and when white America has historically had the ability, the exclusive ability to define what is a crime, you know, this so-called data is not really saying much. But, but let's go back to the data, let's go back to the research, and let's go back to the scientific study as to whether or not uh, black people are overrepresented in prison simply because they commit the most crime. So I have this study by the uh, United States Citizen Commission conducted in 2017. And this study, uh, it found that black men who committed the same crime as white men receive sentences that are on average 20% longer. So, and, and they controlled for things such as criminal history, education, they control for just the general background of the person, their age. And the study came to the conclusion that black men on average are given harsher prison sentences, prison sentences that are 20% longer than white Americans. Meaning right this very second, right this very moment, there is a black person who is behind prison bars who would not be behind prison bars if he was white.